Apples to Organ by Deborah Hopkinson, illustrated by Nancy Carpenter, read with permission from Antium Books for young readers. And that's the trail they took all the way from Iowa, all the way up to Oregon. My daddy loved growing apples, and when he got ready to pull up roots and leave Iowa for Oregon, we couldn't, he couldn't bear to leave his apple trees behind. So daddy built two of the biggest boxes you could ever hope to see, and he set them in a sturdy wagon and shoveled in some good wormy dirt. Then he filled up every inch with little plants and trees, hundreds of them. Daddy was ready for the most daring adventure of the, in the history of fruit. Apples ho! He cried. Along with apples, my daddy took peaches, pears, plums, grapes, and cherries. Oh, and by the way, he took us along too. We had lots to do on the journey. Each morning, I helped Mama bake biscuits while Daddy prepared for another long day on the trail. At night, Mama and I tucked in the little ones when Daddy played the fiddle. He played lullabies under the stars. Well, I could still hear him croon into the Gravensteins. Hush, little babies, don't you cry. Mama's gonna bake you an apple pie. If that apple pie ain't sweet, Dad is gonna munch you for his own little treat. We rolled along just fine till we came to the Platte River. It was wider than Texas, thicker than Mama's muskrat stew, and muddier than a cowboy's toenails. Just looking at it made my inside shrivel. The river bank was crowded with folks and prairie schooners trying to get up the nerve to cross. When they saw us and all our little fruit trees fluttering in the breeze, they burst, breeze, they burst out laughing. Those leaves will be brown as dirt before you hit the plains, declared one old geezer. Plains, scoffed another. That nursery wagon won't make it halfway across the river. But Daddy didn't let their talk worry him. He just looked me square in the eye and said, Delicious, I'm going to need your help. Right then and there, we built a raft for his tiny trees. Then Daddy loaded me and my little sisters and brothers on the edge. Now make sure my precious plants don't topple over into the water, warned Daddy. Well, we, had gone far, we hadn't gone far when that muddy drink started to pull us down. The peaches are plummeting, my sister shouted. The plums are plunging, booned my brother. Don't let my babies go belly up, howled Daddy. I had to think quick. We're too heavy. If we don't go faster, we'll sink. We got to take our shoes off and kick. And so we kicked. Of course, we'd all been raised on apples, and everyone knows youngins raised on apples are strong, mighty strong. Before you could say Johnny Appleseed, we kicked ourselves clear to the other shore. But no sooner had we got every last tree loaded back in the wagon, I spied a, spied a foul-looking bunch of clouds stomping around the sun just fit to be tied. The wind began to throw everything around and everything that wasn't lashed down, like our boots, baby Albert's diapers, every pot and pan Mama had, and even our own little wagon. Next, hailstones big as plums came hurtling out of the sky. Guard the grapes, protect the peaches, Daddy howled. So we all started tearing off our clothes and holding them over Daddy's darlings. Bonnets, petticoats, trousers, hats, even Daddy's drawers. Whew. At last that storm passed and Daddy's dainties were safe. After all that excitement, it felt good to hit the trail again. But before long, we came to an endless sandy desert. Now remember, us youngins didn't have our wagon or our shoes or our boots. and no time, our feet were redder than the poison apple the old witch gave to Snow White. Delicious, this is our toughest challenge, said Daddy, wiping his brow as I followed him on my tippy toes. We gotta find a water hole or my babies are done for. Sure enough, by noon, the fruit trees began to droop. By three, their itty bitty tender leaves were getting crispy. By nightfall, Daddy was crying, a handful of dead branches pressed against his heart. I couldn't bear to see my Daddy suffer. So, early next morning, I took off for water. But although I searched and searched, I couldn't find even a splash or a puddle. After a while, I was so tuckered out, I plopped down under an old sagebrush. Ouch! I yelled, landing on something hard. But when I saw what it was, I whooped for joy. My very own boot 
What's more, it still had some water in it from all those melted hailstones. That was our lucky day, let me tell you. We found out one of Mama's pots and pans we found spread across the sand. They all had a few drops of water in them, too. Just enough to get Daddy's trees to the next water hole before they all keeled over. Oh, my, that first sip of water sure tasted good even if I did have to wait my turn behind some Baldwin apples. Oh, and I'm pleased to say our wagon and all the boots turned up too, all except for one. I reckon that nasty wind blew my left boot clear to the other side of the moon. And if it should happen to drop out of the sky on your head one of these days, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd send it on along to me. Well, we kept on going past Courthouse Rock and Chimney Rock and Independence Rock and lots and lots of other rocks that didn't have names. We climbed up rocks and down rocks and at last we reached the Columbia River. Just a hundred miles to go, declared Daddy. But that by then time was running out. Our little trees that almost drowned in the river got pounded by hailstones and got withered by drought. How much more could they take? And now we were set for a showdown with the most ornery vermin of all, Jack Frost. Oh, I almost spied him sneaking around our campsite, brushing the cottonwoods with his cold white tongue. But I wouldn't about to let him get close to Daddy's apples. So that night I made a big fire and sat by it waiting for Jack Frost. And sure enough, as soon as the moon came up, I spotted that old good-for-nothing slinking across the meadow, headed straight for Sweet June's. I got ready for the fight. Jack Frost came at me, turning the ground so cold my toes went numb, but I didn't give up. I grabbed a flaming stick and threw it right at him. Before you could say Peter Piper picked a pep of pretty pippins, that low-down scoundrel was hightailing and out of there, headed straight for Walla Walla, Washington. A mighty grateful delicious, said Daddy, as he scrutinized his sweeties the next morning. Thanks to you, even the sweet stayed snug. We were nice and cozy, too, added Mama, checking on the children. Sure enough, Daddy's trees survived, just as they'd come across the plains in a swanky carriage. We floated them on boats down the mighty Columbia to a pretty place near Portland. Then we planted them in that sweet organ dirt at last. Gold was discovered in California not long after that. Thousands of people rushed there to seek their fortunes, but not us. We already had our fortune. Those peaches, apples, pears, plums, grapes, cherries made us richer than any prospector. We were happier too. All those apples tasted better than gold. As for my daddy, he was always sweet as a peach. He and Mama lived happily to a ripe old age. Daddy never forgot my brave deeds on the trail. Why, as soon as he sold his first bushel of apples, he bought me the prettiest pair of boots you ever saw. Delicious, said Daddy. You'll always be the apple of my eye. <laughs>